So welcome. Uh, this is a chance for Jill and I to just wish everyone a very happy festive season ahead, but also to just take a few moments to reflect on the year uh, that's just about to conclude. So um, before I go into a little more detail of some of the things that certainly have been prominent in my thinking, Jill, do you want to welcome everyone? Thanks Richard and hello everybody. Lots of you know me, I'm Jill Lockett, I'm the Managing Director here at KHP and it's, it's lovely to offer you this festive message as we go into the break. So the year for many of us, um, and particularly the university, started with the outcome of the Research Excellence Framework, which I have to say was an outstanding success, a, a, a central pillar of course of our partnership, but to get uh, yet again recognition for the breadth and depth of the quality of the research that is ongoing within the university. Much of it of course as it relates to health working in partnership uh, with our NHS trusts. And I also know that the year has seen yet again remarkable efforts from so very many in drawing in external uh, very competitive research grants and the grant awards this year to, to Kings have exceeded uh, those of previous years it once again and now sit just under £300 million pounds per annum. Um, in and amongst all of that, what actually has been very pleasing is to see the ways in which we are also diversifying the income that we need to drive our research. Some of that has come philanthropically uh, and that again is pleasing to see the ways in which we're increasing our opportunities through that. But in particular, it's come through the ways in which we are working uh, with industry, uh, both through our own development of spin-outs, but where industry is keen to partner with us. And the model that we, as I think many of you know, have developed is one where we bring industry into our environment and, and industry partners sit alongside us as we seek to drive our efforts in many different dimensions. Some of those are in early discovery, some are in development of applications. And this work has been going on for some little while, but I think is maturing at great pace uh, now. Now the other quick reflections I had is that we have continued our, our CAG clinical academic group listening exercise through the year. I, I As we enter into each of those um, opportunities to meet with the CAGs. I always reflect on the fact that this has been a phenomenal learning curve for me personally and I actually do want to take the chance just to thank everyone who, have, who have, might have contributed to any of those uh, listening exercises during the year because uh, it is a great way of understanding just the scale of activity that's ongoing across the partnership uh, and I might say the innovation that is engendered uh, in each of the CAGs and the ways in which they seek to deliver their clinical and academic mission. There's a, a moment, if I may, just to once again reflect on and a chance to thank um, many of you who have worked with KHP during uh, this year and, and the past, but perhaps have mo moved on. And I particularly do want to recognise and thank once again um, Professor Anne Greenoff who was a stalwart of our programs in education over so many years. Um, she, her role has now been taken up by uh, Dr. Claire Mallinson, who uh, we're really pleased is really showing tremendous energy in the way in which she's going about uh, a refresh of some of those areas of, of educational activity, and we can see great promise lying ahead. So, um, just finally, um, we're, we're at an interesting point in the calendar of AHSCs. Uh, the accreditation that we were awarded, um, we're now at the coming up to the midpoint. And on the reasonable assumption that there will be opportunities to re-accredit in, in a couple of years' time, we're taking the opportunity to just stand back and review where we have got to. Uh, very impressive uh, outputs, much of which we have demarcated recently in the most recent impact report. But we also recognise this as a chance to focus on some very specific areas of activity. 
and in particular begin to see how we can garner our strengths more effectively in describing our activities and personalised health, the utility <coughs> of health data uh, and how we can apply all of this at population scale including those programmes that are relevant to mental health as well. So there's an awful lot of work to look forward to uh, certainly as we get into the new year. But with that, Jill, can I hand over to you? Thanks, Richard. And it's a pleasure to speak with you all today. And thank you so much for all that you do to help support the AHSC in all of our endeavours. Uh, looking more broadly and globally, our programmes across the world continue to add value. And I've been really impressed uh, with the work in maternal health in Zambia and, of course, the work in Sierra Leone continues, and particularly that response uh, that we had to the oil tanker crash in the new year last year and what an amazing NHS response that was to all of those burns victims. So thank you very much to everybody who really helped with that. Uh, across our wider programmes, uh, our partnership with Sydney Health Partners, they're launching ever more clinical academic groups and of course in Europe we've got the UHA uh, programme where we are president of UHA uh, next year and we look forward to that indeed. Uh, the Mind and Body programme continues with its quality improvement network and it's great to see partners across South East London, across providers and wider place-based teams getting involved with that programme. But in particular I'm really proud of the clinical academic partnerships and the work that they're doing. So in cardio-respiratory we saw the advance of the Centre for Lung Health and all the work that they're doing. In haematology, we saw the developments of Bristol Myers Squibb and they were a real star of our annual conference uh, in the work that they're doing about clonal haemoparesis. And of course in neurosciences, they've come forth in the world on research power and impact and a really fantastic programme around functional neurology. But of course it's in our women and children's health programme where with resilient health systems we're connected to our local integrated care system and thinking about what does it take to improve our resilience and build from the shock of Covid together. So we have huge opportunities together and it's a real privilege for me in the Diabetes, Endocrinology and Obesity Clinical Academic Partnership to actually co-chair the joint board with the integrated care system and thank you so much to Jackie Scott who is the Chief Exec of Bromley Community Trust who co-chairs that with me. And we also co-chair the Population Health and Equity Executive for South East London which has £5 million in inequalities funding and just worked with Lambeth to help build their heart bid which has also attracted research resilience funding from NIHR also for £5 million. So a huge amount of activity, huge amount of energy from you all. I'm sure lots of you are looking forward to a little bit of rest over the festive period, but thank you for all you do and thank you again. Have a happy holiday.